Hello, Rons developers. In this tutorial here today, I'm going to show you how you can embed Rons information inside the Jupyter Notebook. And this is made thanks to a package that is called the Jupyter Rons. That's uh, an interesting, very interesting package that allows us to embed this information in real time inside the notebook. Then uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so the, here I have a project that contains a series of demos of Jupyter ROS, so how to embed ROS information into a Jupyter notebook. And I'm going to share this with you later. So I'm going to add the link. Uh, sorry, this is the wrong button. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to share this link with you on the notes of the program. So of this uh, video, beneath this video. So you can check that later and get a copy of the whole information that I am talking here about. So once you get your copy of the Jupyter ROS demos, then just uh, open it here in the ROS development studio by clicking on open and then open the ROS Act. Now the environment is being set up and what we are going to see is the demos that the guys from Jupyter ROS, the developers of the Jupyter ROS package, they have provided, they have created. So even if you can see this here on the ROS development studio, I have to, to tell that uh, these demos are possible thanks to the Jupyter ROS project, whose main developer is Wolf Wahlberg from uh, the company that's called Quantstack. Okay, so they are the ones who have created the Jupyter ROS package that allow us to embed ROS inside Jupyter Notebooks. And they are the ones who have created the demos that we are going to see here today. And the only thing that the construct we have done is to present everything in a packaged way here inside the ROS development studio. So we have added the simulation stuff that you need in order to get some data from the robot and also some explanation so you can really understand what each command is, is doing. Okay, so here you have a lot of more explanations about that. You can read it later. What is interesting is the list of demos that we have here. And one demo builds on the previous one. So one, so it goes from simpler to more complex. And I think that for today, we are going to see the ROS laser scan, which is one that shows on a, on a notebook the laser scan of a robot in inside the notebook in real time so it's ch if your robot changes then the visualization is going to change and then at the same time it's going to show a robot and it's going to show a grid so that's why it's interesting then i will leave the other demos for you to explore and analyze they, they follow the same procedure that we are going to see here today so let's go for the ross laser scan if you click on the link then a new tab is going to open with this new notebook that contains the content of that demo, how to show a laser scan inside the notebook. That's a demo that we are going to do. Remember that you have here the, the main uh, uh, screen of the Ron's Development Studio. Okay, so in order, you can read all the details. I'm going to go faster, so you don't need to, we don't need to read everything. Then before starting, what we need to do is to launch the ROS bridge. The ROS bridge will allow us to communicate in a web manner from the notebook with the ROS core that it will be running here in a simulation. So how do we do? We have to launch this command. And for that, we need to open a terminal, a shell. So let's go to the ROS DS tab and then select the tools and shell. So let's go here. Ross tab, Ross DS tab, and then go to tools and then select shell. So now here we have a Linux terminal that is accepting commands. Let me put it like this so it will be easier and to understand the commands. So what's a command to launch the Ross bridge? Is this one here? You can copy directly. I'm copying and then paste it here. And it's running. Okay, so it's starting the, the bridge and that's it so once it has started we are done so let's leave it there starting and the next thing that we need is to launch a robot simulation of course because we need to have the urdf the tf and the laser from a robot and since we don't have a real robot connected here so let's use a simulation okay so for that 
Uh, let's go to the simulations menu of the ROS DS and select the R drawn obstacles with a turtle bot. So if we go here and press here on the simulations, so okay, so I had a previous simulation launch it. Let me change, click here, change. So now we start from scratch. Then uh, we have to select a wall here and we have to select a robot here. So click here on the wall and then you have a list of walls. We are going to select the green one with, for the R drone. That's okay for our demo here today. And then uh, we have to select a robot. So click here and let's look for the turtle bot. You can select any of the other robots. Basically what this is doing is starting a simulation with this wall and then spawning this robot inside the wall. So let's do it, start the simulation. Great, so a new, you can see here that a new window it's opening is the gazebo window that is loading the simulation that we mentioned. And here we have, so, and remove the logs and should appear here, the should be spawned in a few seconds. So here we have the wall, we still don't have the robot. Let me see, it is spawning. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's appearing there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, there we have the simulation. We have the ROS bridge, we have the robot publishing the data, that is the URDF, the TF, the laser, etc. So now let's go with the actual demo. So this only preparation. So if you do, if you would do that in your real robot, then you will have to have in your real robot the bridge launch it and also, well, your robot publishing with the ROS core and everything. So we are here ready for the demo and what we are going to do is to select each one of those cells that contains the code it this is python code that is the actual code of the jupyter ros package so it's code that is creating all the stuff that jupyter ros needs in order to visualize so how does it works just select the cell in order to execute the code press run then this the content of the code of this cell will be executed let's do it for the first one and press so once you press it you can see that there was kind of a star here now it's gone because it was executed very fast so, so sometimes it depends on the load of, of your computer this star stays for a longer time then just wait until the star is gone because it means that this code is being in execution so until it doesn't finish, you cannot move to the next one, of course. Then that's been executed. Let's go to the next cell. This cell is creating a viewer. That's the 3D viewer that will contain our information. Then uh, we need a ROS connection to the ROS core and also a TF client to get the, uh, all the transforms from the TF. So that's what it does. Let me run it and it's running and done. Now, let's connect to the topic of the laser that is specified here. So we select the cell and press run. So we are creating a viewer, a 3D viewer, a ROS connection, a TF client, a laser viewer. And now in this one, we are going to create a grid. A grid, you, you know, the typical grid that appears in Arbis or Gazebo. And also we are going to create a URDF model. So we are going to get in this variable the model of the robot and that's the one that we want to represent on the screen. So select this cell and go to run. Then finally, this is the visualization, the 3D visualize viewer. And we are going to add into the objects to be represented in there. We are going to add the grid, the laser and the model of the URDF. Okay, so done it, then press run and execute it, done. Finally, let's display. So we only have to display the whole thing. So that's it, select and let's go. There it goes, robot, as you can see here, the robot, the grid, and then the laser that is being detected in there. So uh, that's it basically. So you can move here like in a 3D environment Okay, you can see like, in the same way as Arbes or Gazebo. So you have, and then you can get closer or, or, or further away. Also, finally, I have included a couple of things here. It's uh, the one that uh, changes the configuration in terms of color uh, and then the type of the grid, etc. So you can 
modify this is just an example okay so you can modify uh, at will so select this cell here and click here and now you can see that you can put the focus closer or uh, further away from the robot also we have changed the the color of the laser visualization uh, then the color of the grid etc and also the size even so you can experiment with that then finally i would like you to do the following is an example so you can see how it changes the visualization here is just to send this command to the robot and then make it move so we can see how the uh, the laser is updated in real time you can see that it's already updated but just to make it more clear and more fun so let's execute this command and for that we need to execute on a shell on a terminal so copy the whole command it's just a typical publisher into the command bell to make the robot move here this message doesn't matter it means that we are using most of the cpu it's okay so and now let's go to tools and select the shell another one and execute your command here to make the robot move performing a circle so if i paste the command and then press enter then the robot should start moving as you can see here is moving on the simulation and then here if we come here back to the notebook we can see we should see the robot moving around and showing the laser there it appears the laser okay so yeah because we have configured here the um so it's it's rotating you can see uh, because we have configured here the base footprint as the pixel frame so you can make experiments by changing this so you can see the robot moving around in a more clearer way now it's like the center of the robot is the center of the world that's why it looks static and what it moves is the laser around but basically that's it so that's a demonstration of the uh, what i wanted to show you about the jupiter notebook so we have other demos here that have been prepared by the uh, by wolf ballpark and then yes experiment with them with all of them that's the tv planner quite interesting so i'm a little bit more complex and interactive markers inside a notebook and then you can interact with the markers and change the results so it's a little bit more complex but have a look at it i will leave that to you and let me know what you think any suggestions we are here to to solve it and to to help so Thank you very much, everyone, and keep pushing your Ross learning.